Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I've done an update on the laser. I've had a lot of interest in the, the overview I did a number of years ago using uh, just cutting Baltic birch and explaining a little bit of how it worked. And uh, I thought I'd go over some of the things that uh, I've learned and I've found out with this laser since then, maybe some of the upgrades or repairs I've had to do uh, and just my thoughts uh, you know, five years later after buying this e uh, laser off of eBay. So. Um, Hang in there with me. I'll try to answer a number of questions. And if I miss them, go ahead and uh, leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to help someone out that's getting into lasers. I'm by no means an expert, but I've been using this one for five years on a number of, uh, uh, number of uh, materials for a number of projects and things that I produce and sell. So uh, always happy to pass on that information to someone else getting started. So let's dive in. Okay, um, so this is the laser that I purchased off of eBay about five years ago. Uh, it was originally billed as a 60 watt CO2 laser, uh, and I paid roughly $2,700 for the base unit at the time I bought it. Now prices have changed a bit, they fluctuate with supply and demand and uh, newer technologies. And in some cases, they actually have uh, made a few things cheaper on them that I've noticed. Um, but as you see it here is, uh, is the laser as it sits today. So just a few of the things on the outside that I'll note. Um, I, I haven't modified the case or the stand. I bought it, it came with the rolling stand. I know some of them don't come with that nowadays. So that's something to watch out for if you're expecting it. In some cases, you might not want that rolling stand. If you're gonna be taking it downstairs and building it onto a platform, you might like to do that yourself. This one does come off of here. You have to get inside of it, uh, undo a few bolts, but you can remove it from the stand. But as far as cosmetic issues with this one, um, the paint has held up okay. The only thing that I have had be a problem is right in this corner. You can kind of see the paint is chipped and it's cracked. Um, just uh, maybe a poor weld and a cut on that area. It doesn't really affect the operation of the laser. The door does still open and holds up just fine. Um, I try to you know, not be manhandling this around too much, um, but as you see, that's, that's about it. Other than that, you know, obviously I've uh, added some of my own uh, decals for fun, uh, just something to warn people as they come over and wanna see how it works. Uh, again, just mostly fun on that, so. Uh, on the inside, again, I haven't changed anything. Uh, I'm still running the stock head, stock mirrors. Um, however, I have uh, swapped out lenses a few times in experimentation. I've never broken one, um, but I've tried experimenting with some different uh, types of lenses and different focal lengths. Um, honestly, the stock one has done well for just most of your average stuff. So, uh, but there are many out there that can help improve the uh, quality of your cut or the, the speed of your cut or the quality of your engraving. There's just a lot of things to learn with different focal lengths and different types of lenses. And, and so they are, uh, they are something you can modify. Now, one of the issues I did have with my laser early on is these are inductive limit switches. And so when you turn the laser on, it needs to find out where is its, the head position. And it does that by moving the head over to the left or the right and all the way back to the corner. And that sets its limits, its, its endpoints. And uh, these are inductive, so they just they wait until they sense metal and then you know there's a certain offset and then it sets that as a zero point. This one failed um, probably a few months into owning the machine. I did contact the seller on eBay. They did get me in touch with the manufacturer. They did send one. It did take a long time. So uh, I actually had gone onto Amazon and I grabbed the part number off of it. And I think for about maybe five to $7, I was able to get a replacement. Um, the big thing that was difficult with this was actually rerouting the wires. You can try to resolder uh, the wires uh, at the end point. Um, I did not have the best luck with that. Um, I was still getting some flaky response. So um, the wire does go into this tube and out and then into the drag chain along the side. It's not impossible to do, but it, it was a little bit of a pain and time consuming uh, fix. But 
that got the machine back and running with both homing. You can disable that if that ever happens to you where this turns on and it just starts ramming into this because the inductive sensor isn't working. You can go into the controller and you can disable the auto home. Um, that does disable some other features of your software and you do need to be careful uh, as to uh, your jobs that you can, your, your machine isn't gonna know its endpoints, um, but in a pinch you can uh, turn that off. Other things that I have had to replace, uh, the emergency stop. I almost never, I never use this, honestly. I've never had a problem when I've had to hit that. However, occasionally it does get bumped, it does get pressed, but inside the emergency stop button on the inside, there are some small springs and there's a, a sprung leaf part that actually makes the contact and, and they are not using the most um, durable ones in these when they build these machines. Uh, so I did have to replace that because my laser stopped turning on at one point. And what it turned out to be was that the, the contacts in there were no longer making a connection. And so I had to replace that switch. Again, it's a part you can get through eBay, Amazon, or, or many laser retails, retailers. Um, they're not terribly expensive. However, there are certain types. You can have a, a dual... Uh, the dual ends and one can be on while the other one's off. They both can be off. They both be on. It's a certain type of switch. But you want to look on the inside of your, uh, you want to look at the switch, look at the model number and get the right one. Another thing I've had to replace, you're going to notice a theme here, switches. So the main power switch, again, the contacts on the inside uh, started wearing out. Uh, they were not making connection anymore. So I had to go ahead and buy a new one of those. Again, I bought two or three at the time. They were about three or four dollars a piece. Uh, and then again, just look for the right one. Uh, another common issue you might find is that in, in the wiring and in, in, the, uh, in the plug and in the switch in the back, there's actually an inline fuse. And there's, there's one on this plug right here. There's an inline fuse. Sometimes that will blow and that's the simplest thing uh, to replace on your laser when it stopped powering on. So, um, other than that, I know, I think in my last video I mentioned, originally this was a 60, it was sold as a 60 watt laser. However, I, uh, I had an issue and I ended up upgrading to a true 60 watt tube. The one that came with this laser really was only a 50 watt tube. And so about, uh, three and a half, four years ago, I did, uh, go out and I purchased this tube from a company that's no longer in business anymore. It's been great. It's been uh, going strong. However, I did have to manufacture this box extension because the original tube was shorter. It, it fit inside the machine and they already had the cutout for this tube extension, uh, but I didn't have the box. So I, I created one uh, out of some acrylic. Another modification I did was I, I it's, and this is really something you should look into doing, a milliamp meter. Your tube is rated to be, to, to run at uh, a maximum milliamp rating, and mine is 21 milliamps. And so this is tapped into the voltage line on the negative side of the tube, and it gives me an on, uh, a real time milliamp reading as the laser is firing. So I can be double checking if my speed or my power that I'm running it at is within spec for the tube or, or, or hopefully just a little bit un, under that. Uh, a lot of people will say you shouldn't run the tubes at more than 80% of their, their power for capacity. I'll be honest, I've run mine pretty close to the capacity, uh, the 20, 21 milliamps for about three years now, and I haven't really had a lot of problems with it. So um, take that <laughs> with a grain of salt. It's my experience, your mileage may vary. Um, uh, based on the, the amount you run it every day and uh, the type of cutting, if it's a lot of engraving lower milliamps versus a lot of cutting at maximum power, your mileage may vary. Another upgrade that I did uh, early on was I got rid of that ugly, gray, uh, noisy, vibrating, power-hungry fan that came with the machine and got one of these hydroponic fans. So uh, I'm using the, the six inch outlet from the laser going into the fan and then up out and I do have it uh, throttled back as, as close to the exit as possible to a four inch just because it was easiest to make that outlet and I haven't had problems with fume evacuation with this setup. Now I do have that and 
my air compressor plugged into this multi-tap power strip so that I can easily turn it on and off, turning the fan on. And as you may be able to notice, it's running. I can still have a conversation. It definitely is making some noise, but it's nowhere near as loud as that original one. And then I can just shut it off. The other thing I replaced was the small aquarium pump. Uh, I, I have gone with this uh, Master Force uh, Ultra Quiet. There are California Air Tools. Uh, Harbor Freight has their own version of these. Um, it works really well to provide fairly constant air supply without the, it's more of a constant supply than the puff, puff, puff you get from the aquarium uh, air pump. And I can adjust the outlet pressure to increase the airflow or decrease the airflow. And I've got an, a moisture trap in there that I replace every few months. Uh, and then I can just turn the air on and off with this valve as well. That's been working well for me. And the, the adjustment of the airflow has really helped me dial in my cuts on, uh, on wood. And then, of course, uh, upgrading from uh, before, I think I had an aquarium chiller, a one and a quarter horsepower. That worked great, but then I had to have a separate reservoir. Um, and there was just more chance for... Um, uh, things to get into the water supply to contaminate it. Um, this is much more of a sealed system, and uh, it's the 5000 series, the CW5000 series uh, industrial chiller. Uh, I have it set to about 18 to 20 degrees Celsius uh, for my cutting or for the cooling of the tube. And uh, being in Minnesota, I do run RV antifreeze in there uh, to help keep it from if if, if it was ever got down below freezing in my shop, it would hopefully help keep it from, uh, from freezing the water in the tube. Correct. So I've, like I said, I've had this machine for about uh, a little over five years now, uh, and, and I've listed off the upgrades and the issues I've had with it. Uh, overall, for my investment, I've well made my investment back on it, and the number of things that I've been able to make, uh, the gifts I've been able to make, I've been able to help my nephew with his robotics uh, uh, team be able to cut out robots during this uh, crazy COVID when they were unable to get into their, uh, their shop. Uh, so it's been a great tool to add to my shop and something that uh, as, a, as an entry level, um, no frills machine uh, off of eBay, uh, I knew going into it, I was gonna need to be able to do some troubleshooting myself, um, be able to uh, do a lot of the repairs myself and that's come with some frustration, but I only had about $3,000 into this machine. I've added some things over the time and, and uh, you know, so there's been some expense, but I haven't had any major issues with it and I haven't um, felt like I wasted my money on it. That being said, it, it all depends on your motivation. If, if you want something for your shop that's easy to use, um, that, that uh, you've got more support on, you might want to reach out to other companies, whether they are a a reseller of similar machines or they have a more specialized machine like the Glowforge, you're gonna have more support with some of those areas, but you're also gonna pay for it. Um, the community out there uh, between Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, there's a lot of help out there. So if you are a bit mechanically and electrically inclined, uh, this machine shouldn't be something to be afraid of but I'm speaking as more of a hobbyist, as a small side business individual. If you're running this machine for a business and you need it running 24 seven, or at least, you know, eight, 10 hours a day, five, six days a week, um, you know, you gotta look at the trade-off of, do you have multiple machines that cost less? One might go down, or do you have one solid machine that you have, you know, a business level support on? You know, that's some of the questions you need to ask. But as far as a hobbyist, a small side business person, I've been very happy with this machine. Okay, so what's next for my laser? Well, as I mentioned, I've had this for about five years. I've been running this tube for a little over three, maybe close to four years now. And uh, while it, it's not uh, dying yet, I don't want to wait until my tube dies to replace it. And so, as you can see here, I got a few boxes from SPT Laser. Uh, there's a couple of 60 watt rated tubes in there uh, that I'm going to uh, be doing a video on. Uh, I'll be uh, kind of talking about the why you might need to replace your tube 
and uh, kind of some of the basic steps of how to do it yourself. Because uh, as someone who bought an eBay laser, and I know I have uh, zero support for the manufacturer at this point, uh, it's on me to be able to maintain this device. So um, being able to replace uh, your laser tube is something that uh, as a laser owner, you're gonna need to be able to do or you're gonna need to pay someone to do it. And uh, so I'm hoping that I can show you uh, how, how the process works for me uh, and how these tubes go in and maybe a little bit of advantages and of how to pick what type of tube things to look for when it's getting to that point for you to replace yours. So stay tuned to my channel. Um, I'll be putting that out shortly. And if you don't want to miss it, go ahead and subscribe and go ahead and hit that bell button. Um, again, if you have any questions for me, I will be happy to do my best to answer them or maybe point you into the direction of your of information related to lasers. Um, they are a very unique tool to have in your workshop, uh, and I'm glad I have mine. I want to see other people be successful with your, theirs as well. So I hope this helped. I hope you have a good day, and we'll see you soon.